Hey Garrett, can you believe that my YouTube channel is two years old already? Apparently he couldn't believe it. Garrett? Hello? Greetings, one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. Yes, I am back after my half-month hibernation following list season. Uh, and that's probably going to be a regular thing with me. You know, I'm going to take, you know, the first half of January after list season's over to uh, recover, rest, recuperate, regroup mentally. Uh, and that seems to be a thing with uh, most of the YouTubers that I follow, anyway. J the first half of January seems relatively quiet on YouTube uh, in the music community. And it kind of uh, fits. It's good. The timing is really good because January 16th happens to be the anniversary date of my first regular upload on YouTube. Yep. January 16th, 2018 was my first video. Uh, not counting the one that I had done like two years previous and since deleted, but uh, reposted it in a throwback uh, six months ago or something like that. And I hope you enjoyed, by the way, the little facelift you might have noticed that I gave to my channel's intro. Yes, I decided to. It was the, that time of the year again, uh, my anniversary date. I like to uh, go over the album art flyby that goes by at the beginning. Uh, just, you know, pull out any old favorites that I'm not quite so fond of anymore uh, to make room for new favorites that I've discovered over the past year. So you'll, f you'll find those in there. Eagle-eyed viewers will find those. And you'll also notice that uh, instead of the... Uh, album art being in even rows, I decided to stagger the rows, offset them, kind of like subway tile, so I just gave a little more visual interest. Uh, and of course the uh, the font, I changed the title font. I just I just decided it was time to change the font. And uh, the, the music, I, I was going to change the music as well, just to something totally different, but I decided, no, nah, I still like the music. Uh, the, the, the Noah remix of my intro was, uh, I decided it was time to retire that and go back to the, the non-vocal version. Uh, just because, you know, I used it for six months. It was fun while it lasted, you know, having having Noah as my guest vocalist and my brother's nail gun as the guest percussionist on that. But yeah, it was a joke and, you know, it, joked, it ran its course. It was fun. But uh, yeah, you'll notice that the music is slightly different. I just took it from a different section of the same composition. So just, you know, just change it up a little, change it up a little bit. And uh, you will also notice at the end of this video that the uh, end screen animation is going to be different. Uh, yeah, I decided to retire the, the CD-based uh, animation that I'd had for the last two years just because, you know, I, I'm still pretty confident that I'm going to be moving away from CDs a little bit more, uh, at least new release CDs, and uh, moving a little more, more towards LPs, so it's going to be a less format-specific uh, animation in the background. Uh, yeah, I, I really enjoy it. I think you'll like it, too, so uh, look forward to that. But, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that little... Uh, facelift on my channel for the coming year or two, possibly. And, uh, you know, I, I've got a couple projects I'm working on that, uh, well, one project, perhaps, in two segments that I hope to bring you in the middle of February. Fingers crossed. Knock on wood. Uh, I do have my uh, bargain bag for January. I actually filmed that when I filmed my favorite albums of the year. I just have not edited it and uploaded it yet, so that will be coming just in a couple of days, hot, hot on the heels of this video. And uh, you'll see that I filmed it earlier because my hair is longer in that video. Keep an eye out for that. Really exciting, you know, monitoring my hair length. If you've got nothing better to do, I guess, right? Uh, but anyway, on to the subject of this video. I thought I would give you something just a little bit different, a little funny, something a little non-music related for a change. Just uh, to celebrate my second anniversary on YouTube, just to tell you um, 10 interesting and random non-music related facts about me as well as answering a few um, viewer questions that uh, my followers on YouTube and Twitter have submitted. So let's just get on with the list of 10 random facts about me that hopefully some of you might find mildly interesting, at least one or two of them. But anyway, uh, one of the things that I'm sure people are wondering about me, I don't think anybody's ever asked, I think one person has sort of asked hypothetically but not directly to me, is what I'm like in real life as opposed to what I'm like in my YouTube channel. I try to present as real a version of myself to you viewers as I possibly can, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, my general likes and dislikes, my music tastes, uh, my sense of humor, uh, because I firmly believe that if you try to be something, if you pretend to be something you're not or try to fake it, people are going to be able to tell. 
So that's why I try to be as real a me as I can be on my channel. The one big, big difference that you will find if you happen upon me on the street or whatever is I'm generally quieter. If I'm in a group of people, I'm probably going to be the person who's uh, talking the least, quite honestly. Not as quiet as I used to be, thank goodness. I mean, my lord, you, when I was a teenager, you'd have to pry a crowbar into my mouth to get me to talk to anybody. So, but yeah, when I, you know, entered my 20s, I finally started to loosen up. And of course, you know, it's like, that's why you tune into YouTube, is to hear me talk. And so that's why I talk so much in my YouTube channel, because it'd be a little boring if you tuned in to sit here and watch me sit and stare at the camera for 10 minutes, right? So, uh, yeah, real world Tom is a little quieter than YouTube Tom. It's basically what it amounts to. Uh, random fact number two is I was born in Texas. Something else you didn't know about me. Yeah, born in Texas, grew up in California. I have visited the states of Florida and Pennsylvania and Nevada, and I think that's about it. Uh, oh, and Washington. But uh, yeah, I, I don't count the states that I've just driven through or ridden through uh, without stopping, basically. So, Oh, and I visited France. Uh, my family and I went on a vacation to France when I was 15 years old. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. I would give just about anything to go back there again because I was too young to appreciate it back then. So yeah. But uh, anyway, my number three random fact about me, and it's just occurred to me, very weird coincidence, I totally by accident made this number three. I have three aunts. Uh, that in itself is not a weird fact. Uh, one of them is deceased, but the other two are still living. But yeah, I have three aunts, and by some weird, strange, bizarre coincidence, they all have the same first name. Yes, uh, my mom's sister is the one who's passed away, and then my mom's sister-in-law, and my dad's sister-in-law. They all happen to be named Shirley. The only thing is when we talk about my Aunt Shirley, we have to specify which one. So yeah, just very, very weird. It, it's It's been normal for me my entire life, but I'm sure to a lot of you it just would be very strange to have three aunts all with the same first name. Just crazy how the universe works sometimes, isn't it? My number four random fact about me is, uh, despite my total love and adoration and passion and near obsession with music, I don't uh, have any musical talents, at least none that I cultivate, shall we say. Uh, the closest I came was I took clarinet lessons for a year back in grade school. Yeah, I wanted to be really cool in grade school, so I took clarinet lessons. Uh, I can keep a rhythm, so I could probably be a good dancer, I guess. And I can type really fast on the keyboard, and uh, several people, probably a dozen people over the years, have noticed that and said, Do you play piano? and I, I've never played piano or keyboards, and so apparently the f speed at which I type, apparently I would be good at piano or keyboards. I've never tried exploring that. I learned the 10 key, you know, the uh, calculator, really, really fast. I mean, like within a day, I was, you know, fire on the 10 key, so maybe I could learn piano really fast and be really good at it. I don't know. I, I suppose maybe I can carry a tune. I mean, I've, I've sung a little bit here on this channel a couple of times, but I would probably need a backpack to carry a tune in maybe but uh, hey I've just been I've been so self-conscious my entire life I don't really like drawing attention to myself yes I have a YouTube channel so but you know take that for what you will but you know you know when there are actual people out there and not just a camera I don't like drawing attention to myself uh, I, I've never been good at public speaking um, but yeah so maybe that's part of why I've never explored music performance as a thing uh, number five random fact about me, and this is just, this is very random, is uh, I wear my wristwatch on my right wrist and not my left. It's very strange. I know, you know, 80, 90 percent probably of people wear their wristwatch on their left wrist. Uh, I, I don't have one right now because I only wear it when I'm out and about in town at work and stuff. You know, when I'm here doing videos, I don't wear a watch. But yeah, just a random thing that I, I wear my watch on my right wrist and not my left. I've always done it that way. I have no reason to change it because why should I? One of the worst things, the worst reasons you can change something that you do that doesn't hinder you or anything in any way is just because other people are doing it. I, I don't like following trends unless I am genuinely interested in what's trending. So, you know, that's that's I consider that in that category. It's like, why change my the wrist that I wear my wristwatch on just to conform with everybody else, right? Uh, kind of related to that, I am somewhat ambidextrous with uh, my hands. I write with my right hand, but I can actually do uh, mouse, computer mouse, with both hands because I use my right uh, wrist for mouse at home. But at work, my computer is oriented so that I have to use a mouse on the left-hand side of my keyboard. So I'm totally expert at that. 
and I answer the phone with my left hand and I the very few times that I've played baseball I've hit with this would this be with my left hand that's how much I know about baseball <laughs> and speaking of baseball maybe I'll add another uh, random fact make this a list of 11 uh, I was into baseball when I was a kid because uh, when we lived down in California my dad would take us to uh, LA Dodgers baseball games four or five games every year and so I kind of followed baseball for a while but uh, I've never really been a sports fan until just in the last four or five years I've really started getting into football you know since I'm not naturally sports minded it took me forever to get the rules down especially the, how the system of downs worked so I, I just I, I was not familiar with a bit of football what can I say so uh, but yeah I've gotten into football and when the Dodgers were in the World Series what was it last summer or the summer before I tried watching a game for the first time in forever and it struck me as being incredibly boring because baseball is so rigidly uniformly structured it just it was totally boring after the excitement of a football and how the f game of football can turn on a dime from office offense to defense and you know with, with turnovers interceptions and all that sad to say baseball is now just very very boring to me and i just can't watch it i've never been into basketball or hockey or any other sport but uh, there's another random sports related note for you for those of you who care uh, on to my next uh, interesting fact about myself is I have been wearing glasses for about 10 years uh, and this is my second pair of glasses as you saw in my throwback video my tw uh, my top albums of 2014 that I did a flashback special on like I said about six months ago I had a different pair of glasses which I still have as a backup I've had these glasses for about three years and for the first time in those three years I'm going to try putting on my old pair of glasses Let's see how that is and yeah my prescription has changed a bit not as much as I thought it had but yeah it has changed a little bit so yeah those glasses are a little fuzzy now so yeah back to my regular glasses so but yeah and related to that my first pair of glasses uh, is an interest interesting story just shortly before I got my first set of glasses uh, we got our first HD television, you know, first big wide, wide screen, flat screen TV in HD. And for the longest time, for what, three or four months, the first three or four months we had it, I was looking at it and saying, you know, so what's the big deal? I hadn't realized that my vision had started going blurry. So when we went to the eye doctor, I got my first eyeglass prescription, came home, we turned on the TV. It's like, oh, okay. I guess that's what, you know, getting used to something in your brain will do. It's like you just assume that the world is turning fuzzy. But anyway, uh, my number six, or would that be seven? I've lost count because I inserted that fact about sports in the middle of my list. My next interesting fact about me is, and this one's going to be you know, mildly disgusting depending on how your uh, tastes uh, range. It's a little fact about my body, a miscellaneous fact about my body. Don't worry, it's not horribly disgusting. Uh, I have no nails on my two big toes. When I was a teenager, I kept having recurring problems with ingrown toenails. Fortunately, I didn't lose my toes, uh, but yeah, they just decided after the third or fourth time to just permanently remove my big toenails. And, and you might be saying, well, wait a, minute, wait a minute, how can they remove your toenails? They grow back. Well, they go in and kill the cells in, I guess it's the cuticle, the cells that actually uh, control the generation of the nail tissue. So that's what they did. And yet it doesn't affect my walk or anything. I don't walk in funny or anything. Um, my just my toes just look a little funny. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I, I have 10 toes, but I have eight toenails. And yeah, I need to, I mean, we all need to be a little careful not to drop, you know, bowling balls or sledgehammers on our toes, you know. So uh, obviously I, I have to be not really any more careful in that regard. I mean, it's not like your toenail is going to deflect a bowling ball when it hits it or anything. But uh, yeah, just an interesting, weird, random quasi disgusting fact about myself uh, another interesting thing about my these are about more about my daily habits I'll, I'll lay off of the disgusting body stuff uh, for now I don't drink coffee I've I've just never been able to develop a taste for it I, I love the smell of fresh brewed coffee I just love the smell of it but I have tried several times to drink it and I have just have not been able to like the taste of it so in fact the about the only two things I ever drink honestly are water and tea I don't drink, I've never been able to develop a taste for uh, uh, carbonated sodas, you know, Coke, Pepsi, anything like that. Just never liked it. And uh, it, that's just as well because uh, we eat enough sugar in the stuff that we eat that, you know, I, we don't need to have it. There's no business having it in the stuff that we drink. For me, 
since diabetes can, tends to run in my family, uh, I don't have it, at least not yet, thank goodness. It's just as well that I do not drink that kind of stuff, uh, but yeah. Anyway, next up on my random factoids about me list, uh, keeping with the dietary habits theme of the last fact, uh, from January 16th of last year through January 16th of this year, I have lost 30 pounds. And this is something that I have mentioned uh, in my channel once or twice before. Uh, those of you who watch and listen regularly have heard me say this before. And uh, yeah, it's basically, yeah, I, I started out last year at about 245, somewhere around there. And I now tip in at about 215, thereabouts. Uh, and yeah, the biggest change we did uh, to, for me to help get there was uh, for dinner time, we go low carb as much as we can. Yeah, we've cut out all the starches and uh, unnecessary sugars and all that because if you're anything like me what do you do after dinner you sit around and watch tv for a couple hours and then you go to bed you don't expend any calories after dinner so and that's where it, that's where the secret lies is for breakfast and lunch i mean I, i've modified over the last couple of years i've modified some what i eat for breakfast and lunch but not a whole lot but the thing is with those two meals during the day you burn those calories to a degree I like to walk a lot. Uh, I've mentioned that before on my on my channel. I try to walk a, a good mile or so every day. I just, I mean, I love to walk, so that's an absolute plus in that department. So, you know, doing something you love and it, if it ke helps keep you healthy, walking is one of the best exercises you can do. So yeah, just uh, cutting out those uh, unneeded calories, the the empty calories at dinner time, has made a huge difference. Uh, I I was in the pre-diabetic range with my last doctor visit before we started this low carb thing and now I've uh, dipped down below that threshold so I'm gonna we're gonna stick with that as much as we can so and I feel like I have more energy uh, you know not carrying around so much weight I mean that that's kind of stands to logic wouldn't it uh, so yeah I'm uh, I'm looking forward to hopefully losing a little bit more weight in the coming year so yeah yay me and then this next one about me uh, continuing on with the eating and drinking and dietary stuff uh, is, is actually the last item on my facts about me list, but it's also something that uh, several viewers have asked me. So it's it's part my factoids list and part my viewer submitted questions list. So, And that is my favorite foods. Uh, basically, if I had to pick one favorite food, it would pretty much uh, have to default to a cheeseburger. Honestly, I am a sucker for a good cheeseburger. Even for an okay cheeseburger, hey, why not? Uh, yeah, it's, that's kind of, if I go to a restaurant that I've never been to before, uh, that's, even if it's not what I'm in the mood for or want to eat, it always tends to be just kind of reflexively what I look at, look at on the menu is their, what their selection of burgers is like. Just because I'm curious, you know. Uh, but I, I love cheeseburgers, but I usually only have them at lunch. I almost never have them at dinner. Uh, and sometimes with bacon, sometimes a bacon cheeseburger, depends on what mood I'm in. I mean, hey. Bacon makes everything better, doesn't it? Honestly. Uh, well, except if you're a vegan or a vegetarian, I guess. So. And, and yes, speaking of which, I have heard, I know some of my viewers are vegetarians and or vegans, and I have heard about this Impossible Burger, but I have never tried it. Uh, I, I'm not afraid to try it. I just never have taken the opportunity to try it. Uh, honestly, I don't frequent places that serve the Impossible Burger, so that, that's the one roadblock that I've uh, encountered to actually trying it. And let's see, as far as other favorite foods, uh, well, a chocolate, just about anything chocolate, really. Uh, who doesn't love chocolate, honestly? I mean, as far as I'm concerned, if you don't like chocolate, you're just wrong, basically. So, uh, yeah, and uh, other other smells that drive me absolutely nuts. I was talking to you about uh, the smell of fresh brewed coffee, even though I don't like the taste of it. Another smell that drives me absolutely nuts is grilled onions. Honestly, I, I could I could have just eaten a huge meal, stuffed myself silly, couldn't eat another bite, and then if I smell grilled onions, I get hungry all over again. I don't I don't know what it is about grilled onions. Just the smell is just heavenly to me. And uh, well, this actually comes into the next uh, question, viewer submitted question. This is actually from Garrett over at Young Entertainment Specialists. He asked me, uh, "What is a food it seems everyone else enjoys but you don't like?" And so I decided to delve into my least favorite foods, segue into my least favorite foods. Uh, to answer your question, Garrett, it was it would basically be oranges or anything that's orange flavored. I yeah, everybody loves oranges except me. And in fact, that kind of extends to all citrus. I've just never been a fan of citrus, the taste or the smell. It kind of goes back to a uh, childhood experience, which I won't talk about uh, on the channel. It's just kind of weird. So I could be having an unfair prejudice from my childhood in my mind, 
because I have not tried or retried citrus or oranges in 20, 25 years. And, and I've, uh, despite my distaste for citrus, I have yet to develop scurvy. So uh, I, take, I take vitamin, I take a multivitamin every morning. So that uh, I'm sure partly makes up for it. But yeah, never any nutritional issues from lack of citrus. But yeah, just never really cared for citrus. And another thing I just don't like the taste of is spicy foods. Yeah, I just, I, I have to, if I'm going to have something spicy, it has to be a low level, you know, a, a mild level of spicy. I don't like the habanero, the ghost pepper, the chipotle or anything like that. And I never have. Yeah, it's just, you know, my taste buds are basically wimps is what it is, honestly. Uh, and, and I'm pretty much the black sheep in my family when it comes to that. Uh, my mother loves spicy foods. My brother really likes spicy foods. Uh, my sister loved spicy foods. So, and actually, I don't think my dad likes spicy foods very much. So, so he was the other one. I, I get, I guess I get the no spicy genes, foods gene from my dad in that, in that case. And uh, I was talking a minute ago about vegetarians and vegans. I would probably do okay as a vegetarian or a vegan. I love all sorts of vegetables, pretty much all vegetables except celery. I do not like celery. It has to do, it's, it's a combination, the smell, the taste, and the texture. I just have never cared for it. Uh, and uh, also oh, uh, lima beans. I do not like the consistency of lima beans. They're that chalky, pasty kind of ugh. So yeah, lima beans and celery. Oh, and I'm not fond of eggplant either. It just doesn't have a taste. I mean, I, I like squash, zucchini, and that kind of stuff. And, and eggplant is kind of in the same ballpark as squash. But yeah, I just I think it's the taste mostly of eggplant that I just don't care for. But pretty much all other all other vegetables. Uh, since we've gone low carb, I've gotten developed much more of a fondness for cauliflower, because you would be surprised at what you can do with cauliflower to approximate pasta or starches. You can mash cauliflower and it's like mashed potatoes and you can uh, uh, scallop it, you know, like shred it, scallop it, and you can do a pretty darn good approximation of scallop potatoes with uh, cauliflower. So look up cauliflower recipes. If, you, if you're interested in going low carb, look them up, honestly. They've done wonders for my uh, waistline. Uh, and then my next uh, viewer submitted question is from Alyssa. Hi, Alyssa. Uh, what is your favorite movie? And honestly, obviously, it depends on what kind of a mood I'm in. I mean, up on my absolute list of all-time favorites is the original Star Wars from 1977. Love that. I've watched it dozens of times. Uh, obviously, the Star Trek movies, being a big Star Trek fan. Uh, the Fugitive, if you have never watched The Fugitive, the 1992 movie with Harrison Ford and Tommy Lee Jones, you've got to see it. It is a edge-of-your-seat nail-biter. I mean, those are those are cliches in movie reviews, but those totally hold up. And I love, love, love Tommy Lee Jones' deadpan sense of humor. It is on full display in that movie. You've got to see it. It is The Fugitive is probably the best TV show to movie adaptation ever. It's just fantastic. But all of those movies and the ones that I discussed in my uh, Movies from My Childhood video that uh, I did a few months back, all those movies I love, um, but I have to be in the mood for, obviously. Uh, and I mean, honestly, any movie you kind of have to be in the mood for, but to answer your question, Alyssa, my favorite movie of all time, I would ju I just had to basically narrow it down to the movie that I would find myself most often uh, up for watching, you know, depending on my, my overall average mood, and that would probably have to be The Wizard of Oz, the original 1939 Wizard of Oz. It's got humor, it's got thrills, it's got drama, it's got action, uh, it's got suspense, I guess. And it's even got music, although the weird thing is, I just don't care much for musicals. Go figure, right? I mean, uh, Annie and Grease, and uh, there was a Disney movie from the late 70s, Pete's Dragon, the original, not the remake. And, and that's that's kind of a musical. Uh, so, I mean, I, I like those, but, you know, as far as, you know, the, the golden age of musicals, like from the 40s, 50s, and 60s, the, lo the whole lot of them I pretty much could do without. But uh, yeah, Wizard of Oz is just way up there in my favorite movies of all time list. And another thing that that probably has to do with is, I'm pretty sure, I, I don't know this for definitive sure, but I'm pretty sure it was my sister's favorite movie of all time. So that probably has a lot to do with it. I know she absolutely loved it. Don't know if it was her favorite, but yeah, I mean, that's... So yeah, whenever I watch it, it reminds me of my sister. So that's another thing that makes Wizard of Oz just way up there. That's, that would probably be the go-to answer. So there you go. And then my final viewer-submitted question comes from my good friend Noah. 
uh, he submitted actually a couple of very interesting, thought-provoking kind of questions. You know, he's kind of getting going one of those deep-thinking kind of guys on me. He's, you know, none of this "what's your favorite food" or "what's your favorite color" stuff for Noah. It's just you go, you know, the the really th thought-provoking, provocative questions. Uh, and he gave me a couple, as I said, but the one I thought would be most interesting to answer on this channel is, if you could be doing any job with no restrictions, what would it be? And I had to think about that one, uh, as I said, and a couple of different quest uh, a couple of different answers, scenarios for me uh, came up. One, I, I don't know if I if I would have a true passion for it, but one thing I think I would be pretty good at, at least, is being a high school English teacher, because uh, as I've alluded to and mentioned a couple of times over the course of this channel, I tend to be a, a fierce defender of the proper usage, usage of English, uh, not quite to the snobbish degree, you know, I, I don't know who instead of whom, or, you know, that, that kind of uh, detail, but, uh, you know, just some of the things that uh, young people have incorporated into our uh, lexicon over the last several years, particularly with the advent of uh, text messaging and that kind of stuff, these abbreviations and and these other words that have come about uh, just kind of, they're like nails on a chalkboard to me, so I would, you know, I would be probably going off on a heated lecture about some of these things in English class, so in that perspective, I maybe I wouldn't be a good English teacher, but, you know, I, I would try to instill in my students the proper use of English. I guess I would have to strike a balance between traditional and the more uh, recent developments in English uh, that don't quite grate on me so much. But anyway, I suppose if I uh, was at it for often enough and if I struck a chord, chord with students, I would probably develop a passion for it. So, uh, And I know, I know Noah himself is uh, going to be a, a, a teacher or wants to be a teacher, and this actually had no influence on the the other. You know, I, I just, I'm just totally independent of, you know, my own recognition of my own passion for English, as I said, uh, was what made me come up with that. Uh, but the other answer, I think, would be some kind of a graphic designer, because I love doing, and this is something I'm going to be talking about in a couple minutes here to kind of cap off this video, uh, I like to do mix CDs uh, from time to time. I don't do them as often as I used to, but one of my favorite parts about doing mix CDs was doing the cover art for them. I mean, I would go all out. I would do the front and back inserts with the track listings in, in their own font and their own design scheme. And, you know, I'd have a special picture picked out and the, the types typeface for the front cover and stuff. And even for the CD label, I would do something special for the CD label and all that. And I could literally spend hours, I have literally spent hours, just hours just whiz by with me sitting at the computer doing these things. And it's like, I sit down after lunch to design it and it's like I turn, look up from my computer screen and it's dinner time. I mean, that, that has literally happened before. And, uh, and that has kind of carried over into my YouTube editing. You know, I, I like to, you know, make things as fancy and precise as I can uh, with that. So, yeah, that is something I think I would have had a genuine passion for, uh, as is evident in what I've been talking about, how time totally, literally flies by when I'm doing them, is, you know, a, a graphic designer of, of CD covers, album covers. I mean, you know, CDs are kind of going the way of the dodo, so uh, I, I don't know what kind of a future I would have in such a profession. Although, you know, vinyl albums, you know, vinyl LPs are coming back into style, so who knows? Uh, but yeah, it, it would have been cool to have, I think, a, a paying job in that uh, in that department. Uh, but anyway, uh, as I thought I would uh, close out this video by kind of segueing from that, and I mentioned a minute ago about uh, the um, mix CDs that I like to do, uh, I've actually been doing one since 2004, and it is actually how my YouTube channel got its name, Tom's Hip Parade. Uh, I started, yeah, as I said back in 2004, I did a mix CD of uh, my favorite new artists' cool songs and hidden treasures from the year in music. That's the subtitle that I used for my mix CD series called Tom's Hit Parade. And I would give one every year to uh, a cop, you know, a copy each to uh, all my coworkers and a bunch of friends and and family. I would send one to my sister every year while she was around, and it just kind of developed. And uh, I would gradually add a few more people to my list, um, you know co-workers who left or retired or moved away or whatever, you know, so I'd, I'd send them to them in, in the mail and stuff. And eventually my list got up to a little over 20 people every every year. So, you know, every year I would crank out 20 copies of these uh, Hit Parade CDs. And I had so much fun uh, not only picking out the songs, but also designing the covers. Uh, when I came into the more recent years, I started, as you will see in this collage that I'm putting up here on the screen, 
I started doing parodies of uh, classic album covers, uh, at, at, kind of in the vein, in the vein that Weird Al did. Uh, but yeah, uh, so yeah, it's a whole lot of fun. But since I started been uh, started doing YouTube, I've just been having trouble finding the time to do those uh, CDs. Uh, the last two years, in fact, were late. Uh, I was late getting the things out. I actually didn't get the my Hit Parade CDs out to my friends until this past week. Yeah, so yeah, the second week of January, and whereas I used to have them out uh, before Christmas. Uh, so yeah, I've decided pretty much that this past year, my 2019, uh, will have been the last year, I think, for doing these Hit Parade CDs. I mean, I have thought this, uh, honestly, for the last couple of years, so I could change my mind in the next 11 months, but uh, yeah, I, th I think I've, I've pretty much decide decided to retire my physical mix CDs of Tom's Hit Parade. Don't worry, my YouTube channel Tom's Hit Parade is not going anywhere uh, if I have anything to say about it. But yeah, it, it was a whole lot of fun, and uh, yeah, uh, actually last year, this year's was actually a combination of 2018 and 2019, because last year I did a uh, special version in honor of my sister. It was a throwback collection of her favorite songs. I call it Kimmy's Hit Parade in honor of my sister, so uh, that was kind of where the idea of my uh, Kimmy's Hit Parade episode of my YouTube channel last year came from. So, uh, But yeah, I think uh, I'm not as much into doing that now as into doing my YouTube channel. And plus, I mean, people, uh, fewer people have CD players now, I think. I mean, I think the people that I give these uh, mix CDs to, they all still have CD players, but, you know, in general, mix CDs are kind of, you know, going away. Their, their purpose in life seems to have dwindled now that you can pretty much find call up any song in 30 seconds on the web or on you know streaming services or whatever on youtube and, what, and whatnot so yeah tom's hit parade the mix cds are i think pretty much retired unofficially we'll see as i said how i feel in in 11 months time but uh yeah so yes anyway i thought you would find it curious as to where the name tom's hit parade came from uh, yes, I, when I was uh, relaunching my YouTube channel, I had a couple of other names in mind that I'm kind of cringing at now. I'm glad I didn't call my channel Tom's Music Corner, as I almost did, because, you know, hey, I'm sitting in a corner when I film it. <laughs> Cute, huh? So, yeah, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad I chose Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, there was a couple, of, a couple other names that I'm not going to mention that were even more cringeworthy than that, but uh, anyway... Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed these little uh, factoids about me and uh, my viewer submitted questions were a lot of fun to answer. Uh, maybe for my third anniversary video, bring us bring me some more questions, some more maybe some more thought provoking questions that I might have the courage to answer on camera. But anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.